On Friday the 13th of March 1976, um, I found I'd got very peculiar sore red uh, elbows. And uh, I'd just given birth to my daughter two weeks before. And I thought it was the start sheets in the hospital. Because he kept me there for eight days because I'd eaten too many eggs and I was constipated and we wouldn't let me go home. <laughs> so uh, I was diagnosed later with psoriasis. Uh, my dad said, Whoa, don't come near me, that's infectious. <laughs> There's nobody in the family got that, no, it must be infectious. So he kept one well away from me for a while. And um, they mummified me, covered me in coal tar, and just left two little peepholes for me to breastfeed my child for two weeks. And um, so I came out black, but um, cured. And then every time I got stressed, it would return. Right here. Um, 34 years later, no, 33 years later, um, I was diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis. Um, that was last year following a, a traumatic relationship with <laughs> um, so the first symptom was, um, oh, over the last five years, I've had inexplicable swellings, big hands, big knees, um, big feet, unable to walk, use crutches. I go to the hospital, to casualty, and they'd say, oh, it's an infection, take some antibiotics, um, which didn't do any good at all, obviously. And I had four outbreaks of uvitis, inflammation of the iris. Um, and they couldn't really figure out what was wrong, but I'm um, thanks to Google. It's not only good at giving directions, it's very good at researching your illnesses. And um, <laughs> it said there was a very strong link between uvitis and psoriatic arthritis. So I thought, hmm, perhaps I've got that. So, let me see what happened. Oh, yes, following the relationship, um, due to not so much vanity as insistence on his part, uh, this huge thing which he called a planet on my right foot, this bunion, uh, could be taken off so I could wear sexy red high heel shoes. Um, so I went to the orthopedic department and she said, frankly, I'm more concerned about the swellings uh, in your joints. And my wrist was swollen, my fingers and my toes were swollen. So I'll send a blood test for testing uh, rheumatoid factor which she did. And um, then I had to wait nine weeks for an appointment with the rheumatologist. Um, during that time, I'd been wearing flip-flops in France and um, I found I couldn't walk. And I thought, oh, better wear some normal shoes, but it didn't help. So it was really painful to walk. And um, later on, I couldn't use a knife and fork either. My hands were so painful. Um, so eventually, um, I was seen by the rheumatologist last, mm, was it last September. Yes, I'd waited from June until September. And um, I didn't have a very good relationship with this doctor. As soon as I walked through the door, I got the feeling I was a disease, not a human being. And she just said, right, uh, you have psoriatic arthritis and you will have to take methotrexate. That's the drug of choice. Um, I'd read a leaflet on it in the waiting room, so I was not really <coughs> happy about it. Um, so she said, I would have to take that, otherwise it was a degenerative crippling disease and I would be in a wheelchair. So um, in the leaflet it said swimming at 93 degrees was very helpful. So I joined the gym immediately. And um, shock horror got in the hydrotherapy pool and I met this lady who said, oh, it's a year ago tomorrow that my husband died and I joined this gym to make friends and get a new interest. And I said, oh dear, what was wrong with him? She said he was 52 and he had psoriatic arthritis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she said it wasn't that that killed him though, he was on methotrexate and it compromised his lungs. So naturally I was even more reserved about taking methotrexate. Um, how much time I've got left? You're in time. Oh. Um, so uh, a friend has a friend with ME. And um, she was seeing a consultant, wonderful Dr. Wright, 
who was prescribing her, uh, no, he wasn't prescribing LTM, but he was seeing her and giving her lots of different uh, medications. And she said, it sounds good, this LTM, why don't you um, try and get an appointment with him? So I looked on the internet and it looked really interesting. No side effects except vivid dreams, hooray. So um, I made an appointment to see him. And it seemed a bit expensive. It was £150 for consultation. Um, so I walked through the door. He offered me a cup of tea. A really nice man. Gorgeous looking as well. <laughs> and uh, um, he said, well, there's no guarantee that this will work. Um, but you can give it a try. And I said, well, that's why I'm spending all this money, just to see if it works. And he said, oh, it won't cost you £150. Um, sit down, drink your tea. I'll take you on a quick... Uh, chalk through the immune system um, and then you can have a hundred quid appointment, which I did. And, um, and then I, he wrote me three prescriptions for three months um, off to kind Mr. Dixon in, uh, in Glasgow and um, oh, I was taking, sorry I forgot, I was taking uh, morphine or morph to sleep. I could sleep for perhaps an hour a night and during the day I was on um, codeine um, which didn't really work. I took codeine and codeine, and um, the pain would subside for a while. I, I couldn't walk downstairs. I used to fall downstairs. Uh, it was a toss-up whether Beryl the dog, who was really ancient and decrepit, hit the bottom before I did. <laughs> so the same. I said to Dr. Wright, "What happens about the painkillers I'm taking? Because it's an opiate blocker, so um, they won't work." He said. I'm sorry, you just have to wean yourself off them. So I stopped taking them and for two weeks. I just put up with the pain. And um, I took out again that night, had a vague feeling of euphoria. And in the morning, I felt fine. Um, now, the stiffness lasts for perhaps 20 minutes at most. Um, I don't have any pain at all, just discomfort. Or if someone shakes my hand vigorously, uh, it hurts. And I'm a great advocate of MBT shoes uh, because I can't feel any pain in my toes while I've got these in. They're really ugly and they don't go with an evening frock, but um, <laughs> they're fantastic. Uh, but I made a big mistake. I got these from eBay and big sense of them, £67.50. But then I saw a more glamorous pair called Mary Jane. I thought, oh yes, they look much nicer with a frock. Um, <laughs> so they were 19.99 on eBay. I thought I'll bid before the end, but I left it five minutes before the end, and I put my maximum bid in for 98, no, 99 pounds 33 pence. <laughs> so the, the the price was shooting up. Someone was bidding against it. It went from 19.99 to 24, 35, 46. 61, oh no, 72, 83. <coughs> it got to 97 pounds plus five pounds 50 postage, and they arrived two weeks ago and they don't fit. So, <laughs> and he's going to put a bunion uh, insert and stretch them on the machine for 24 hours for three pounds 16. But I'm not optimistic. Um, that price of vanity. Um, I had a sex change before I came back from France because I got two letters from my MP. I think she, she imagines that Mo is short for Mohammed. <laughs> so it says, uh, Mr. Mo Schofield, dear Mr. Schofield, uh, thank you for your letter. This was a request for um, special funding for an unlicensed drug. Um, we're very concerned to hear about the difficulties you've had with your treatment. I've written to the Secretary for Health, the Right Honourable Andrew Lansley, CB, MP, Chief Executive. As soon as we have a reply, we'll forward you the outcome. Um, oh, uh, please find enclosed the responses I've received from Bolton PCT and the Department of Health. I'm disappointed to not be forwarding more positive news. However, the letter does offer a contact for me to pursue this matter further. Um, 
and it says here, uh, I've looked into the circumstances involved and I have to conclude that Mr. Schofield's GP was right not to prescribe low-dose naltrexone on the NHS for his condition. Um, whilst there are clinicians and patients who claim there are clinical benefits arising from the use of LDN, um, there is little hard clinical evidence to substantiate these claims. Indeed, naltrexone is licensed for use in the management of alcohol dependence. My husband's an alcoholic, perhaps I could say it through him. And, <laughs> um, and it's used in a low dose form in the treatment of conditions such as Crohn's disease, aculosin spelt wrong, spondylitis spelt wrong, multiple sclerosis, arthritis, and cancers is off license and experimental. And it goes on and on and on and it tells me what I might do politely. And, uh, but my doctor lulled me into a false sense of security. Before I filled in this funding request pro forma, he said, oh yes, um, I have the greatest respect for Dr. Wright, and if he says it's okay, then it's okay. You can be the surgery's guinea pig. So he gave me a prescription for LDN. I was over the moon. That's 15 pounds a month saved, and five pounds for the prescription, 20 pounds a month later on. Uh, I took it to the chemist, and then, when I wanted another prescription, it was a different doctor. Um, oh, he said, I've never heard of that. Don't like the sound of that. I'll go and see a colleague, which he did, and the other colleague hadn't heard of it either. Um, then the next day, they had a big conference and decided, no, it was too dangerous. They weren't going to prescribe it at all. So, um, never mind. <laughs> um, thanks to... Um, the wonderful improvement with LDN and following my retirement two years on, I've now got a job um, doing life modelling, which is £11.50 an hour. <laughs> and um, they like the bunion. That is... <laughs> yes. You may see it on YouTube. <laughs> Mr. Mohammed Schofield's bunion. <laughs> Have I had 10 minutes now? You have. <laughs>